Today we'll be having a look at the Big Tree Tech Pi 1.2 and the Pi 2. So let's go. To run Clipper, you'll need a host, and I like to use the Big Tree Tech Pi 1.2. Uh, I have a ton of these, and I like them. But Big Tree reached out and asked me to make a video comparing these two. So this is the Big Tree Tech Pi 2. Just just a quick note, Big Tree Tech did send me both of these to make this video. They've not paid me. This is not a review, I'm just letting you know what's what. Alright, so I have the both the boards and let's have a look around them. So this on your right is the Big Tree Tech Pi V1.2. And then this is on your left the Big Tree Tech Pi 2 V1.0.1. First of all, let's just have a general look at the old model and just see what's there. And then we'll have a look at the new model and then I'll start talking about the differences between them. So I'll put all of the specs on screen and let's have a look. So the old Pi of uh, the V1.2, it has an all winner H616 quad core CPU at 1.6 gigahertz. It's got uh, one gig of DDR3L memory and it has a storage slot for an SD card at the bottom right here. It has a 100 megabyte per second um, Ethernet slot. It has a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi card on board. It has four USB 2.0 ports. It has a micro HDMI 2.0 and an SPI port for video. It also has a five volt fan port that is controllable from Clipper. Now let's look at the general specs for the Pi 2. It has a rock chip RK 3566 quad core CPU at 1.8 gigahertz. It has two gigs of LPDDR4 memory. It has an internal storage right here of 32 gigs. That's eMMC storage. It also has the SD card slot on the bottom. This has a one gigabit per second um, ethernet port. It has a 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network card, Wi-Fi. It has 5.2 Bluetooth. It has three USB 2.0 ports and one USB 3.0 port. A single micro HDMI 2.0 and it has a port for CSI and DSI ribbon cables, but it does not have a fan port. I'll just start off by saying that there is one big issue about this um, original Pi 1.2 and it is the fact that there is a grounding issue with the USB ports. In most cases that won't be an issue but it can hurt you in some play in some cases and it can break some USB devices. I've, I have not experienced this with any of my printers and as far as I know it's only happening to smaller USB stuff that are not protected. This has been fixed on the Pi 2. I've verified that with a multimeter and there is no grounding issue with the USB port. Both the devices are powered either by 12 or 24 volts straight in through uh, cables from your power supply or it can use the USB-C ports. So what are some of the differences between the old and the new Pi? Well, the obvious ones are that the GPIO pins have been moved. So on the Pi 2, they're at this side, and that is to match up with the um, Raspberry Pi uh, layout. So this is more like a Raspberry Pi layout. However, 
the um, Pi 2 is longer so it's um, it's the same layout but the the board is slightly bigger the old Pi had one hole out offset right here and this made it so that a mount you would either use just three screws or you would have to make um, a small small change to make it work on the Pi 2 that's fixed so now it's using a normal Pi 4 layout the old Pi has a dedicated port to do CAN however you'd still need an adapter plugged in to make that work um, and this has been removed on the new one just because the adapter would just plug into USB anyways so having these ports would be um, just overkill to be honest one new thing on the Pi 2 that I really like is the fact that it has the 32 gigs of eMMC on the board eMMC is uh, slightly faster but also more reliable than SD cards the number of SD cards that I've broken over the years is too high and this is a very welcome thing to have on a Pi second thing that this has is that it has a PCI Express port on the bottom so you can use that for an M.2 storage drive uh, so if you want to use this for other projects where you want faster storage you have the option for a PCI Express um, expansion another thing that I've noticed is that the Pi 2 has three buttons on it now these are um, let's see this is a reset button this is a power button and this is a recovery button the actual functionality of these makes it so that you can um, you don't have to unplug or uh, turn off your power supply or do anything to do flashing and, and stuff like that on the original Pi they have an SPI output uh, for a screen and I believe they've removed that because it just it it had some issues and most of us will rather just use a HDMI touchscreen and just won't use an SPI port so they've um, cleared up some space but they've added a DSI and a CSI port to uh, make connecting multiple other stuff to your printer easier there are two small ditch dip switches on the Pi 2 this one here at the back is to uh, enable or disable the eMMC storage so if you want to use an SD card you can turn off your eMMC and you'll be able to use your SD card however if you have something stored on your eMMC that would need to be formatted and removed before an SD card would be able to use it the second dip switch is for a on, on the go or OTG mode I'm not entirely sure why this is here if you have a suggestion to why this would be needed please leave a comment and I'll try to, um, to explain it if I can find some more information there are two really strange things that I've noticed this has a microphone input it's not a microphone but it's a two pin input for a microphone not entirely sure of the use case um, if you're not using this for printers there might be a good reason to have this so I'm not complaining I'm just it's not for me but yeah and the second thing is there is an SPDIF output um, right here it's not a plug it's just a three pin connector um, so I would be interested in, in how you would deal with that. Both of these have an IR receiver and I believe it, it also sends, which makes it so that you can do, uh, you can make your own remote controls for your projects, which that could be uh, kind of cool. One difference that I've found is that the old one has a headphone jack. Uh, this is both in and out and the, on the uh, original Pi it's a two channel and ground but on the new one it's a three channel and ground so that would support some more features if I now turn these this way you'll see that 
uh, funnily enough, they've reversed the orientation of the uh, network plug. It's it's not it, it doesn't matter. It it doesn't have an actual use case. It's just funny. But the USBs are different. So the original um, Pi ha only has four USB 2.0s, which should be fine for most. On the new Pi 2, there are three USB 2.0s. Uh, these two being normal ones. This top one is disable if the OTG plug is switched. And the bottom one here, as you can probably see, is a USB 3.0 port. For connectivity, um, the Pi 1 has a wireless card on the bottom. Uh, this is only 2.4 gigahertz, and there's no Bluetooth. On the new one, they've moved it up top, and now it's a 2.4 and a 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi card, and also a Bluetooth card. Both of the boards have an SD card on the bottom. On the new one, it's not as relevant as it used to be because you have that eMMC storage and you also have the PCI Express. Um, so you can use M.2 drives directly on your Pi. This might be good if you're using this for a uh, small home server. You can put a one terabyte, two terabyte um, drive on there and it should give you some decent speeds. Just note there is a UPS hookup right here. Uh, this is made specifically for the uh, Big Tree Tech uh, UPS boards. And that's it for these two. Um, in clipper use there's not big differences. If you're just using this for one printer the old one is still good enough and it's plenty fast. The new one is just a little faster with a bit more features. If you want more detailed information, I'll leave a link in the description to the Big Tree Tech product page and also their GitHub, uh, which contains all of the pinouts and most of the information you would want to get. I will also put some affiliate links to these two products. If you want to help support me, that's a good way to do it. It lets Big Tree Tech know that you like my my content and they will keep helping me make these videos so if you haven't subscribed please do hit that thumbs up button or down if you don't like this please do that and I'll see you another day I I, I guess